fresh FUD out of Bitwise CIO Matt Hoogan, who says that Bitcoin may be in for an unexpected crisis. Welcome back, everyone. It was the title that got me of, of this article, right? You know how they say, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, in this space, I just see a title that looks appealing and I'm like, OK, fine, you, you got me. Let's dive into this. And of course, for me, the curiosity really has to do with the fact that it's it's the Bitwise CIO, Matt Hoogan. And of course, when he mentions the vague term unexpected crisis, I had to, I had no choice, right? Had to click, had to read it. So let's dive into it. I mean, is he, is he really, is he really just fudding? Is this really just a giant nothing burger? Let's dive into the article and find out. Bitwise CIO Matt Hoogan said that the crypto king is now stable enough to be considered a store of value, much like gold. Interesting doesn't really sound like a crisis. It kind of sounds like Bitcoin's growing up. And for the people who don't know, Bitcoin is now 15 years old, right? It's just a totally energetic teenager. So one of the things that Matt said was Bitcoin has gotten to the point where it's sufficiently stable to be used as a store of value. If you look since COVID, the US dollar has lost 25% of its value. Bitcoin is up something like 800%. That's a pretty good store of value. People forget that even gold itself is pretty volatile. Bitcoin is slightly more volatile than gold, and that means you have more upside. So wait a second. Is Matt saying that volatility is good? Whoa. It's kind of the opposite messaging that we've been hearing about Bitcoin, even though us as Bitcoiners understand that volatility is essentially inherent uh, in the actual environment. And essentially part of price discovery, right? Because it's humans. It's humans that are essentially ascribing these values to these different assets. And so when when humans believe that the future is bleak or they don't understand some certain aspect of something, they want to insulate themselves from risk. So at that point, they may be willing, right? A person may be willing to sell off an asset for a different asset that they believe has more desirable properties in that type of an environment, right? In an environment where um, money is not cheap, right? And you can't easily borrow money in order to invest it and whatnot. So again, I, I mean, to me, the volatility has always been a good thing. And to the CIO's point, it's just very interesting hearing these guys make the same arguments as Bitcoiners uh, five, six years ago. That yes, exactly, the volatility is a good thing. Here's something that the Bitwise CIO said that kind of indicates to me that he gets it. Okay, check this out. Investing in Bitcoin will be pretty boring, like gold. But it has to follow this journey. You can't create a store of value that emerges from nothing and is instantaneously stable. It's just logically impossible. It has to follow the journey that it's on, which is declining volatility and increasing price. And I think that will persist into the future. Now, why? It, what's, what I find fascinating is that, you know, about five years ago, these institutions, not, not necessarily bitwise, not necessarily bitwise, but many trusted institutions um, were essentially downplaying Bitcoin uh, for its volatility. And, and, and not only that, but essentially um, the qualities that are being touted here five, six years ago were, were actually seen as possible hindrances to Bitcoin's possible success. So it's very curious that the rhetoric is changing, the propaganda around Bitcoin is changing, and now all of a sudden, the things that made it eh, not so desirable all of a sudden become the features that are incredibly desirable. So this is a, an interesting analogy that, that Matt gave, okay? If this were an early stage technology company, like a Series A technology company, but being priced in real time, we would see the same kind of volatility. It's just an early investment. 
The difference is it prices in real time, so you experience that volatility. A couple of things about this. Um, the framing of, uh, of Bitcoin as an investment, I, I think I toss back and forth with that um, because I see it more as um, a money saving tool. Now, granted, that could be because of all of the type of Bitcoin literature that I've read. Um, so I believe I, I gravitate much more towards uh, the savings vehicle. Um, although I, I do think that there's some overlap, right? There's some overlap between an investment and a savings vehicle, right? Because let's be honest, why are you investing? Indeed, there's a certain degree of risk, but you're investing because you believe that this may become a savings vehicle and may provide outsized returns in regards to the market um, and may also beat inflation, which would preserve your purchasing, our purchasing power into the future. So I could see the overlap between the two. Um, the other piece to the other piece to it is this, right? Why, why is why are we now seeing the framing like gold from Bitwise? Granted, Bitcoiners have been saying, oh, Bitcoin, digital gold. And I know that the uh, the narratives have changed throughout the years, but I'm just saying the store of value one has been very popular and, and, and has managed to inspire many people to begin accumulating and understanding Bitcoin. Is Bitwise trying to frame it like gold? in order to show that this asset has now matured. And of course, what would be the reasons why they would want you and me to see this asset as a matured asset? Well, it's their business, right? They want you to buy shares of their ETF. And of course, they want to make money off those fees. Um, so they are incentivized. They are incentivized. And not only that, but the other piece to it is this, right? When you imply that something doesn't have very much volatility or you imply that something is stable or in this case, a store of value, what does that mean? That means boring, okay? That means boring. That means not much is going on. That means you set it and forget it, right? You just put your money into this thing and that's it. You do nothing. That's kind of what they want if you think about it, right? In terms of, in terms of these ETF providers, I mean, it's... Okay, I guess there's two sides to this coin, right? Um, obviously, if you trade, they make money off the fees. So that is desirable. Okay, that is totally desirable. But at the same time, it's also desirable for them to just, you go and keep parking more and more of your money over there. That's also good for them. So anyways, I, I just... I'm very fascinated by the um, by the mainstream or, or we'll say the legacy finance people coming to Bitcoin and starting to weigh in on the way that they see it. Bitwise has done a really good job uh, with their marketing. So I'm just I'm just wondering how much of this is marketing, how much of it is really the sentiment of this CIO. Um, time will tell. Time will tell. But I will say this, the changing narrative of legacy money is bullish for Bitcoin. Catch you guys next week. That's all I wanted to talk about today.